Have you ever wondered where the ocean's garbage goes? Does it vanish into thin air, or does it collect in some unseen corner of the vast blue expanse? The truth is, it's a bit of both, and it's a problem that's been tackled by an international agreement known as the MARPOL Convention. The International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, or the MARPOL Convention, was established in 1973. It's an agreement that has shaped the way we dispose of waste at sea, and it's all thanks to the International Maritime Organization, or the IMO, voiceover. Now, let's take a closer look at this diagram from the MARPOL Annex VEV. This diagram, often referred to as the Garbage Disposal Flowchart, illustrates the crucial steps in the garbage management process on a ship. Starting from the top, we have the generation of waste. This is any waste produced on the ship, including food scraps, packaging, operational waste, and cargo residues. This waste is then segregated according to the guidelines laid out in the Annex. Next, the diagram shows the storage of this waste. It's important to note that Annex 5 mandates that all ships must have a garbage management plan, which includes the proper storage of waste until it can be disposed of correctly. Moving further down, we see the three main disposal options disposal at sea, incineration on board, or disposal at port reception facilities. The type of waste and the location of the ship determine which option is used. As we move to the bottom of the diagram, we see the all-important record-keeping process. Each disposal must be logged in the garbage record book, providing transparency and traceability. As you can see, this diagram provides a clear visual representation of the garbage management process under the MARPOL Convention. It's a reminder of the steps we must take to preserve the health of our oceans. The first annex of the MARPOL Convention came into effect in 1973 and focused on oil pollution. It was a significant step towards reducing the harmful effects of oil spills and other oil-related pollution. Two years later, in 1975, Annex II was introduced. This annex focused on the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances in bulk essentially meaning harmful chemicals transported in large quantities. In 1978, Annex III was implemented. This annex focused on harmful substances carried by sea in packaged form. It was closely followed by Annex IV in the same year, which dealt with sewage disposal from ships. Annex V, the one we're focusing on today, came into effect in 1988. This annex is all about garbage disposal at sea, and it's made a significant impact on how waste is managed on ships. It prohibits the disposal of all types of garbage at sea, with a few exceptions like food waste, animal carcasses, and cargo residues that do not contain harmful substances. Lastly, Annex VI was introduced in 2005. This annex focuses on air pollution from ships and includes regulations for ozone-depleting substances, nitrogen and sulfur oxides, and volatile organic compounds. Why is the MARPOL Convention so crucial, you might be wondering? The answer lies in the fact that it represents the inaugural substantial stride towards an ocean that is both cleaner and healthier. This convention introduced the concept of the Garbage Management Plan under Annex 5. It also made it compulsory for each ship to maintain a garbage record book. But that's not all. It underscored the of ship certification to ensure compliance with all MARPOL regulations. The significance of the MARPOL Convention doesn't end here. It serves as a stark reminder that the task of preserving a cleaner ocean is a responsibility that is shared by each and every one of us.